Welcome back to Teachable Moments with April. Happy Mindful Monday. I will be reading from the Unity Ministries new publication, The Power of Prayer. Praying Without Words by Rev. Sandra Campbell. Now, Sandra Campbell is actually a familiar name, Rev. Sandra Campbell, Wayne Campbell, because of the series that I read before, How to Stay Centered No Matter What, she wrote the, uh, the article, The Power of Life, that um, I read on Saturday. Um, this one is also written by her. Um, okay, so I, as a communications major in college, one of the first things I studied was theory. One theory by a noted philosopher in the field is that one cannot communicate. Take a moment for the double negative to sink in. In the same way, one cannot not pray. Just as we are still sending a message when we are silent, I've learned that when we are not speaking, we are still praying. Our prayers are as constant and fruitful as our thoughts. As scripture reminds us, before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. Isaiah 65, 24. Many people believe prayers must be wordy, loud, and beseeching for God to hear them. When I was young, I listened with curiosity as preachers and other adults raised their voices to God to give them this or change that. I could never bring myself to pray in that way. I somehow knew that we did not need to utter a word for our prayers to be heard. My mother taught me to say grace before every meal, and it is rare that she starts eating before she has given thanks to God and for the hands that prepared the meal. When she forgets to say grace, I remind her she already prayed without uttering a word. One of my earliest experiences praying in silence followed the death of my two-year-old son more than four decades ago. For a time, I was utterly speechless as I struggled to find words to ease my sorrow. I would sit in silence for what seemed like hours, waiting and hoping for answers. Without realizing it, I was following the steps Jesus laid out when the disciples asked him to pray. But wherever you go, into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Matthew 6, 6 through 8. Today, I consciously begin my daily prayer time by centering on my breathing to quiet my busy mind and relax my body. I close my eyes and repeat one of the affirmations that help ground me, such as I am poised and centered in the Christ mind and nothing disturbs the deep, calm peace of my soul. I continue to pray and breathe deeply as I begin to feel relaxed and centered. Following the natural rise and fall of my breath, I sit quietly and I listen. When thoughts invade my peace, I give them a gentle nod and return my attention to my breathing until I feel poised and centered again. I am now in my inner room with the door closed to all outer distractions. Here is where I listen and I wait in the silence. When I feel ready, I return my attention to my breathing open my eyes and express gratitude for this precious time of sacred communion. I feel an inner knowing that my prayers have been heard, my needs have been met, and the way before me is smooth and easy. It was during a time of silence one morning lost in my grief that I received an answer in the form of a scripture. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten. Joel 2.25 through unity teachings, I have learned to pray affirmantly by acknowledging that my beliefs empower my prayers. I put my heart into believing in a restoration of peace and joy, which has happened not just once, but again and again, reassuring me that one cannot not pray.
As Jesus said, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Mark 11.24 This kind of prayer is about not being married to a particular outcome, but instead preparing the way for something better than one can ever imagine. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple, Podcasts, and many, many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place, and that's what I love about it. When I came across it, actually on Spotify, and I thought so, I, I, I'd always been wondering how to do it, how to uh, make that transition into it. And um, Anchor has made it so easy, and I am so glad that I have found it, and I've started my podcast for my social skills group. And hopefully I can use it for my students as well in my class. So download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. Prayer of Silence by Rev. Beatrice Bell I am now in the sacred place, that place where the Father and I are one. I close the door to all distractions, to all external issues. I surrender myself to the divine presence in the assurance that all sorrow is healed. The outpouring of healing and comforting love brings peace and calm to my soul. Infinite wisdom reveals to me a new understanding of my life and my circumstances. Guided and inspired, I find the strength to live each day with faith, joy, and enthusiasm. Dear God, this moment is our moment. In it, I experience the gift of presence, and I find the peace I am looking for. I open wide the doors of my being to receive the wonderful blessings and goodness prepared for me. My final thoughts. I'm glad I read this uh, particular inspirational article by Reverend Sandra Campbell because, to be honest with you, I started out when I would pray. I would pray um, out loud. Um, Then it was, you know, silently or whispering to myself. But now I've come to a point, it's actually been a while now, that I actually don't do that. I don't consciously like pray like that it's just something that happens silently and um inside like I'm not speaking I'm not it's not something that is um conscious like I'm saying it's just something that of just being just being and I consider it to be praying um and I hear other people say And there's no, I don't think there's any exactly a wrong way uh, of praying. I think it is individualistic um, to each person, but I don't, I'm glad. And I wonder sometimes when I hear people say um, that they do that and they may go into details. And I think to myself at times, I don't do that or I don't do that anymore. It doesn't seem like I need to do that. And it's not something that I gave a lot of thought to. It just kind of happened. And, um, yeah, it's not something that's elaborate. I'm not trying to choose my words. It's like, it's, it's been like a journey of sorts. I don't know if all people go through that, but I know that I did. And I often, you know, things cross my mind. I said, well, maybe I should be doing it the way I used to do it or how this person that's, you know, talking to me is doing it, but it's just as fulfilling And I I feel a very deep connection 
more so by me doing it the way I do, which is, and they gave a name to it, prayer without words. I'm not speaking. I'm not going, dear God, and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, But I used to do it that way. It just kind of happened, and I feel okay with it. But like I said, often it often crossed my mind. I'm thinking, am I doing something wrong? Should I be doing that? Or should I be doing more? Um, but it doesn't feel that way. When I really think about it, I feel even more connected to our creator just by me being in the silence um, and not consciously praying and, and trying to choose the right words. Um, because he knows what you want and what you need even before you do it. Um, it, I think whatever the spirit, the Holy Spirit moves you to do and it feels right for you, for your connection with him and his son, then do it. There's no right or wrong way. Everyone has to establish that. It's there regardless. Because a lot of times people say, I remember comedians saying um, about finding Jesus. Um, Well, you don't really need to find Jesus. Jesus is not lost. (laughs) You are lost in a way, okay? Um, But yeah, so whatever feels right for you. For me, in the silence of, of not consciously praying and trying to pick the words and it just comes naturally and I feel very connected to our creator and his son so hopefully if you are still going through your own journey or you feel the same way you know um, this may help someone out there who is going through whatever and they need to you know find the right way or what feels right to them in order to strengthen uh, their connection with the Almighty. 